Hey guys, CG Aviator here in the cockpit of the F-35B. Today we're going to be doing a particularly challenging approach. It'll be a case three into a TACAN final, converting to a vertical landing on the deck of a ship. So lots going on, and I'll be following as best I can the real world procedures from the NATOPS guide. But as you can see out the window, the weather isn't particularly helpful. So it's overcast at five to 600 feet. 150 at 15 knots is the wind. We've got moderate to heavy showers of rain in the vicinity and the visibility is 3000 meters. I've set myself up on a 120 radial inbound. The base recovery course of the ship, i.e. the orientation of the runway, is 090, so I'm 30 degrees offset. The white line you can see on my display is set up for my radial and the green line is my TACAN. Now there's no TACAN on this ship so what I've done instead is got a GPS point that the green lily is pointing to and effectively it works the same. The next point I need to be aware of is my Marshall point, which is in effect the initial approach fix. So Angel 6, which is 6,000 feet, add 15 to that gives me 21, so 21 miles, which I am 0.3 away from and I'm ready to commence. Dagger 1-1, one, one, commencing altimeter 1013. At this stage, six degrees nose down, speed brake to hold 250 knots, looking for four to 6,000 feet a minute. Dagger 1-1, one, one, platform. At this stage, I'll decrease my rate of descent to about 2,000 feet a minute with five degrees nose down, and then power as required to hold my 250 knots. All stable so far. My next event is to level off at 1,200 feet AGL and begin my arc at 12 miles. But I want to anticipate the arc, so by the time I turn right almost 90 degrees, I'm at 12 miles. So I'll use about 13.8 miles as my initiation. In the lower right of my HUD, I've got my radial information and my range based on that point that I have at the ship, That's effectively my TACAN. Really important to get this successfully is to fly known pitch and power settings. And from there, make really small corrections so that you can be nice and stable and just monitor the progress of your aircraft. So we're in a pretty decent place. We're at 15.7 miles and at 13.8, I'll start a rate one right hand turn about 30 degrees angle of bank onto the arc of 12 miles. Now, because we're south of Southampton, just off the coast, there's a bit of land that we go over, which becomes quite interesting, but we'll ignore that. We'll say that's not there. It's also worth mentioning that the ship is static. Normally it'd be moving and it'll position itself as required in order to avoid having to fly over land at about 800 feet AGL. So here we go, 13.7, right turn. You see that ground coming in, we'll ignore it even though it looks fairly ominous. About 200 feet to level, so I'm just raising the nose slightly to anticipate. Keeping the bank, leveling at 1200 feet. And I'm using the altimeter, the altitude, because with 1013, that's my Q and H, and I'm over the sea, mostly, so it should match itself within a few feet. Ordinarily, your AGL, your rad out, would be the main reference. So here we are. We are on a 12.1 arc. We're there or thereabouts at 1200 feet. And the next thing we need to anticipate is the turn back inbound onto the Takan final. I'm a little bit fast, so a little bit of power off to reduce the speed. 250 knots until we configure the aircraft. So to anticipate the radial at about, what am I, 12 miles, I'll use about eight degrees as my reference. So eight degrees on top of the base recovery course of 090, so 098. I'll start a left-hand turn, rate one turn. So here we go. So once I'm established, 12 miles, 1200 feet, I'll call dagger one one gate and then configure the aircraft. Pre-landing checks for this, essentially put the gear down and slow down to your final approach speed, which today will be about 130 knots based on a gross weight of 
38. So in the HUD I can see we've got 090, so shack that nicely. The wind is from the right, so I'm putting my heading about 094, and hopefully that will hold the radial inbound. Gears down, slowing down nicely, keep adjusting the pitch to maintain level, and you're looking to put the flight path marker a beam the center point of the E bracket you see on the right hand side of the flight path marker. Okay, we're looking good. Now about 47, 48% power will hold us configured at 130 knots, nice and stable. All is well. Next event is five miles. That's my final approach fix at which I can start my descent down towards the carrier. My minimum descent height above the sea is 470 feet. There's a couple of options when it comes to descending. I'm going to use a two and a half degree nose down or put the flight path marker two and a half degrees on the pitch ladder and then flight down to 470 feet that'll put me slightly low on the nominal glide path because the natops guidance suggests that at four miles you want to be at thousand feet three miles you want to be 700 feet four miles you want to be uh, at correction one mile you want to be 400 feet but I'd prefer to get down to my minimums and then drive it in whilst I'm searching for the carrier because the weather is rubbish. Well-timed lightning there. Here are 6.6 .6 miles inbound. The other things we don't have on this vessel because it is a Microsoft Flight Sim workaround is the VSTOL OLS, the optical landing system, which is like uh, Pappy's, I guess, but it's what they call the ball. When you see it, you call the ball and then you proceed inbound based on that. So we don't have the ball nor do we have the hover position indicator which is what they use for accurate hovering alongside the ship so i will be eyeballing it here at 5.5 miles 1200 feet radial 091 so i'm slightly off but it should be correcting Dagger 1-1, one, one, final approach fix, gear. Okay, two and a half degrees nose down, best I can. Speed stable. On alpha. And 4.4 miles. So now it's just a case of watching the rad out because that is primary. We're at 1,000 feet now for 470 as our minimum. Radio looks good. Speed looks good. And you can see the sea getting closer. That's 800 feet on the rad out. The next event will be leveling at 470 feet. imagine doing this for real it'd be nerve-wracking coming up on 600 feet 2.5 miles from the carrier five hundred and ten feet and a bit of a yug <laughs> to safe minimums Right out 478 feet and visual with the carrier 12 o'clock. Dagger 1 1, ball. Now, technically, without the OLS, I'd call ICU or something to that effect and proceed inbound. So now I'm just putting the carrier at the three degree nose low on the pitch ladder and then holding that as I descend down towards it. Next, I need to offset to port side to the left. I need to engage the stovel mode. 
about 0.7 of a mile will work out because it slows down pretty quick. Okay, engaged. The HUD goes a bit wacky, but we'll work with it. And now I've got stick for altitude and power for forward and back. Next, I need to engage hover mode. I'm looking for 120 feet rad out, left hand side. Engage hover mode at about 0.1 because we're fairly slow already and it slows down pretty quick. Dagger 1 1, hover stop. Okay, now we need to match the forward movement of the ship. Of course, it's static, but the technique remains the same. Stabilize alongside uh, what I'm using as my reference is the white line. Ordinarily, he'll nominate you a spot, and it's usually seven or seven and a half, depending on what ship you're going over. And then we'll slide across. See, the radar is currently around 120 feet. As we get over the deck, it'll change to about 50. Using the tram lines as a reference. Radout's 54, clear to land, dagger 11, one, one, clear to land. Stick forwards to move the aircraft down, make sure I'm in idle. Toe brakes. Touch down, disengage stable, and switch off the lights. And that's it. Thank you for watching. If you like the content, please hit that like button. If you want to see more content like this, then consider subscribing. It supports the channel and it's very much appreciated. Until the next time, take care and fly safe.